What's up? My name is Techno, here for Troubleshoot, and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, this is part one of two, where I'll be talking about how to get Steam levels free. Though, because Steam makes money through this system, it's far from fast. If you'd like to learn different ways of leveling your Steam account quickly, check the description below for part two. And of course, there are timestamps there as well, if you watch one video, then the other, and you want to skip any section or method. Basically, the majority of your account XP, and hence levels, will come from trading cards. These cards are turned into badges. But how exactly do we get trading cards? Well, there's a few free ways, but it's mostly a pay-to-win game, because that's how Steam makes a lot of profit. But even before that, why would we even want to level our account? Well, beyond a certain point, it's just bragging rights but you do get some extra function. First, you get a larger friend level limit for each level you go up. Each level increases your limit by five up to a maximum of 2000 from an initial limit of 250. On top of this, you get even more things for your profile like different showcases where you can put more info, showcase achievements, screenshots, reviews, artwork guides, and items you want to trade and much more. By default, I don't think you get any of these. You need to level your account first. Usually you'll get five friend slots per level and each 10 levels you'll earn a new profile showcase. On top of this, if you're using cards and badges to level up your account, each complete set of cards you convert into a badge gives you XP and an increased badge level for whatever game or event you crafted a badge for. Most of these have limits of only five levels, but the events like the summer and winter sales usually don't have a cap to how high you can push the badge. As well as this, when you craft a badge, you get a random emoticon, a random profile background, and usually a random chance of getting a coupon for a random game. And speaking of free things, on top of this, the higher your level, the more likely you are to get randomly dropped card packs just simply by logging into Steam weekly. While I'll touch on cards and badges, you need to have spent some money on Steam in the last few months to not have a limited Steam profile. This allows you to earn cards, craft badges, and more. You can have badges on a limited profile, but they won't increase your level at all, as well as other limitations, obviously. How do levels work? Well, essentially, you get levels when your account passes certain XP thresholds. The higher your level, the more XP you'll need to reach the next level, so things get infinitely harder the higher your level is. Where you may need 100 XP at first, you'll eventually need thousands of XP when you get into triple digit levels and higher. Speaking of which, in the description down below, you'll find this Steam guide that talks about how much XP you need per level. 100, 200, all the way down to 36,000, and so on and so forth. There's a seemingly infinite number of levels of Steam. And with that explanation out of the way, how exactly do we level up our profile? Well, once again, there's paid and free methods, but let's start off with free methods that don't really involve cards at all. These are simple XP challenges and things like that that you can complete. Essentially, when you sign up to Steam, the first thing you can do is finish the welcome badge for a little bit of XP. The community leader badge can get you from level zero to level five for free simply by doing simple challenges on Steam. Essentially, the community leader badge is really easy to do. There's three different levels to it. The first gives you 100, then 200, and finally 500 XP. That's a solid five levels, and you need to complete almost all of the tasks. The guide linked in the description down below talks about how to complete basically all of these challenges here, and it should be incredibly simple to follow. Regardless, when you're done, you should be on level five, which is a great place to start. Then once in a while, there'll be a challenge or quest in the Steam Summer Sale, or sales alike, in general, that you'll get some XP from, though it's not very common at all. The last event to have this was the Steam 3000 Summer Sale 2022, the Clothax Quest over here. Essentially, you can get 10 levels from a badge here simply by completing some easy steps on Steam. Heading across to my profile page, you can see this gave me a full 250 XP when I completed it, which isn't a huge amount, but that's two and a half levels. So that's really not bad. These don't come around all too often, so don't bet on this as the best way of leveling up your profile. The next badge is probably one of the simplest to get, though one of the most expensive. This is the Game Collector Badge, which you can check on your profile. Essentially, the more games you own, the more XP you'll get, but this does scale down linearly. The more games you have, the fewer XP you'll get per new game you get. The only caveat is that this doesn't count free-to-play games, so it's not really free but you don't have to spend any extra money to get extra XP other than you are spending already. Then finally, the last and probably simplest way to get XP on your account, though probably or definitely the absolute slowest, 
is the Years of Service badge. The more years you're around on Steam for, the more XP you get, though of course, this is definitely the slowest. That being said, it's free XP, so it shouldn't be forgotten in this list here. Now let's talk about methods of getting cards to level up our profile directly by crafting badges. So to begin, how to get free cards. Well, obviously, the easiest way of getting free trading cards is asking your friends and people alike to give you trading cards for free. This is commonly known as begging, and of course is super unpleasant. Nobody likes being asked for free cards or leftover cards, especially repeatedly. But this can be one of the best methods to collect cards, of course, if your friends have what you're looking for. Trading a card for a card or cards for emoticons and things like that is always an option and is much less annoying than getting pinged about someone asking for things for free. Then next up, we have idling games. If you buy a paid game or spend money in a free-to-play game, including a lot of free-to-play games like CSGO and Dota, though not every game is eligible, you'll basically get card drops or at least card drops that you can get. Most games with trading cards enabled will drop a card after about an hour or two of playing and then a few more distributed over the next few hours of playing the game. So this is definitely one of the easiest, but it does require you to own the games on Steam. While you can earn these from actually playing games as intended, you can also use third-party programs to idle in-game time without even needing to download the game from Steam in the first place. This is where Archie Steam Farm and similar software comes in handy, and you'll find guides linked in the description down below. While free-to-play games don't drop cards, you can grab the games that go 100% off for a limited time, as they usually stay paid after the sale or promotion finishes. Meaning if they have card drops and you're lucky enough to snag a game for free, that's usually paid. Well, hey, that's some free cards that you can idle for to level up your account further. Then the next thing is drops from sales. Usually in sales like the Steam Summer Sale, besides the odd quest or challenge to get an extra badge and some XP for free, you can also get free card drops by completing your discovery queue. Essentially, Steam will bait you into viewing a few games suggested for you and in return, after completing a very short queue, you'll be given a card drop for the sale. This refreshes daily during the Steam sale and is a really good way to collect a few badge levels, especially if you're doing this on multiple accounts at once. Usually these only appear on big sales like the summer and winter sales because they'll need to have badges specifically for them on Steam. Once again, you can automate this somewhat using Archie Steam Farm and programs like that. Again, guides down below. Now for something you probably haven't heard of, and that's converting gems into cards to craft badges, etc. There isn't a direct way of doing them, and of course you can sell most of your items on the Steam market. If you can sell items, it's probably a good idea to sell backgrounds, emoticons, etc, etc to the Steam market and buy whatever cards you're looking for, which is pretty much a free way of doing things, you're not spending money, assuming you have backgrounds and things from crafting other badges in the past. But for some items, like this one here, you'll see that it's not marketable. It's only tradable. Assuming you can't find someone to trade this with, there is another method we can use to turn this item over here into cards, badges, and of course, steam levels. You can see this one is worth 60 gems, and all of these items here have different gem values depending on how much they are worth. For me in rands, it's usually about 1 cent to 1 gem, but I think 10 gems is pretty much as low as it goes. This is probably maybe one American cent, not too sure. But for non-marketable items, turning them into gems is probably the only thing you can ever do with them unless you trade them with other people. Assuming you do turn them into gems, you'll eventually end up with a big pile of gems and nothing to do with it. These were added in the holiday sale 2014 and have just sort of stuck around in obscurity since. But we can convert these to badges, by using different bots. The next video goes more into depth in using the frag zone bot over here. This is just one of the bots that lets you trade keys for card sets and badges, and of course, gems as well. You'll find this linked in the description below, and I'll go more into depth about card bots in the next video. Simply hit message when you've added a card bot to chat with it, and when the chat window opens, we can use commands like exclamation mark check gems one, and we'll see if it'll give us a set for one gem. Of course not, but it basically tells us the price is 980 gems per set. Say you're happy with this, search your inventory for gems, find out how many you have, then with simple division, you can find out how many sets you can buy. 5,040 gems divided by 980 each, we can get just over five sets. So for bots, I'll use exclamation mark buy gems, five, and that should get us five sets. 
There we go. It'll send us the trade offer for 4,900 gems. I can view it. And of course, I can confirm and accept it when I'm happy with it. This gives us five sets. And after finishing the trade, we can, of course, craft our sets. I've got two here and further three here. There we go. It's even taken me up a level. On top of this, you get a whole bunch of backgrounds and emoticons that you can recycle once more to stretch your money even further. But speaking about money, that'll all be covered in the next video, which you'll find linked below. And unfortunately, that's really about it for all of the different free methods for getting cards, getting levels, etc. There's not too much outside of the scope of this video, or at least if there is, it's probably not going to be that crazy. These are the most well-known ways of getting free levels for your Steam account. In order to get many more levels a lot quicker, you'll need to spend something on Steam, whether it's buying games during certain events, buying cards, etc, etc. There's a bunch of different paid methods that you can use to get different levels really quickly. For that, you'll find part two linked in the description down below. I've split this up into two just to make it more simple, more searchable. Previously, when I've connected these two, people got a bit upset that they weren't all free or it seemed like it was misleading. So to keep it simple, I've split it into two. That being said, don't be scared away by the thought of spending money. Oftentimes you can sell in-game items to get different cards, keys, etc. Or you can even sell the cards themselves if you get rare cards that you sell and trade for cheaper ones, etc. That'll all be covered in my next video, talking about the fastest ways to get levels on Steam, which will mostly be focusing on, or entirely focusing on, different paid methods, as that's where the real speed is. Anyways, that's really about it for this relatively quick video. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Tech Number here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.